I grew up in church. My mom kept me in church. I'm just going to make this really quick. And I'm thankful for that because she had such a hard time out of my brother who was such a hell raiser. You know, she said, I'm going to keep Michael Hugh in church. And she did. And I was thankful for that. And in the church, I had such a hard time being in church because me and the pastor just butted heads all the time. I was just this young, uh, rebellious kid. Uh, you know, I just didn't go by the rules. I love God. I wanted to be at church, but I just didn't fit the mold as everybody else. Being, you know, I was just a knucklehead. And, uh, you know, and he was always cracking on me all the hard, hard time. He was always giving me such a hard time. But I'm thankful for that because if it was not for him, if it was not for him bringing in an evangelist that I heard when I was sitting in the youth choir, I realized I was lost and I needed Christ in my heart. You know, I went down before to get baptized. Didn't mean a thing. But when Christ came into my heart, I cried. I must have cried for two hours. I mean, it was emotional for me. I'm mean, 13 years old. I am weeping. The whole youth group got saved that night. It was unbelievable. Uh, you know, we got saved that night. I was never the same. I was never saying Christ was alive in my heart and he, he talked with me. The Holy Spirit he talks with you and, and Christ comes in and man, he starts leading you and guiding you. Your whole outlook on life changes. But I was young. And I can remember getting baptized the second time and the preacher, he was always giving me a hard time. He says, Mike, you can't be making this a habit. You know, I said, you know, I've been baptized once. How many times is it going to take? I said, well, it really counted this time. Really, honestly, I got saved this time. And, you know, I know the difference. Yeah, at one time. But then, you know, as I was going through high school, my dad ran a beer joint. He was a drug dealer. And so I had that part of my life I had to deal with. Coming, coming from a broken home, you know, my mom and dad didn't live together. I knew my dad. He was a, I, he, people liked him. He was a good guy. I could probably count on my hands the times that I was around my dad as a kid. I mean, he was around. I knew he was around. Uh, but, you know, it, I just never did... As a young man, you're always trying to make that connection with your dad. And I'm sure it's the same way with the girls and, and different things with their moms or with their dads and stuff. But for a guy, a guy's always trying to make that connection with a man, with an authority figure. You know, and it just wasn't there. And it's like that in most people's life. Most people come from broken homes. They come from uh, situations where they don't have that connection. People say, Mike, it's, it's bad today, like, uh, you know, like it's never been. We're living in the last days, and, you know, look at all the crazy junks going on. It is no different than it was in the first family. We've always been broken. Since we fell in the garden, we have been broken. We've been broken, you know. There ain't. I, I don't know of any families that are together. I mean, I, I've never seen them, you know. I, that's just me, you know. Now, I'm sure they're out there, you know, but dear Lord, where? I don't know. They're not from where I come from. You know, everybody, you know, we, we just it was just hell raisers all the time. It was always chaos in the house all the time. Always spitting, screaming, kick, cussing, kicking, you know. Yeah, alcoholism, just craziness. You know, that was that was the life I grew up in. I mean, my brother, I've seen my brother do some crazy things as a kid. I was just like, I'd be walking down the street two o'clock in the morning, you know, six, seven years old, just crying my eyes out, you know, just walking down the neighborhood, you know. My, I can remember this stuff because of this craziness. Hiding under beds because people were shooting and stuff. You know, Michael, you get under the bed, you know, people were shooting outside. I'm like, what? You know, what kind of lifestyle was that? But we've all got testimonies like that. You know, we've all come out of craziness like that. But you know, my dad, thankfully, you know, he, he had the beer joint. We did a lot of drugs. I had that influence in my life. I backslid. You know, I started doing drugs. I started smoking pot like crazy. I was a pothead like crazy. And I got started late. You know, I started at the end of ninth grade. Uh, and I was I was behind. <laughs> you know, ninth grade, man. Man, you a late bloomer, ain't you? you know, we've been doing this since sixth grade, you know. I'm like, who am I? Who are these kids I'm hanging out with? You know, this is craziness, you know. Smoking cigarettes and everything else. I never did smoke cigarettes, but I was a pothead. Uh, all the way from the end of ninth grade. Now, I know, I know this is a crazy testimony, but this is just my life. The end of ninth grade, all the way through the middle of twelfth grade. Every day, every day, we smoke pot, morning, noon, every, after showers, going to concerts, just constantly. That's all we did. Sold drugs. Parted all through, through high school, skipped school, smoking pot, smoke school, smoke going to school, smoke at lunch break, whole nine yards. That's why I couldn't get through geometry. I'd be standing at the chalkboard. Uh, I was good at the first two lines of geometry. 
you know. We have two people, stand, you know, come up, you know, and I, I'll be standing up there, and I could get, you know, the first line and maybe the second line. But, you know, there's usually about eight or nine of them out there that you got to work. You know, I could never get to the bottom of the chalkboard, you know. I, and finally, they'd say, Mr. Stroud, you sit down now. You know, the other student doesn't sit down, and he's just like, and, you know, you know, everybody's looking at you, and you're thinking, God, this guy's, because I know how it is now when I'm around people. You know, I know how people are. I know how people smoke pot and stuff like that. Now it's just kind of crazy inside. Everybody's trying to accept it. And, you know, drugs will destroy your life. They'll destroy you. It's, you know, you can make every excuse in the world, you know, because I've heard them all. I've thought of all of them. You know, I, I get more revelation. <laughs> When I'm high, man, I just, I got deep thoughts in the Lord. You know, when I'm high, God just opens my mind up. You know, you think all kind of crazy stuff like that. You try to justify stuff like that. And people try, you know, it's all green and it's all good. The Lord said it in the Bible. You know, he put every herb on the field, you know. Let's smoke some jalapenos while we at it, you know, if we're going to do all that. You know, it's craziness. But drugs will argue from what God has created you to be. You don't have to have that stuff. You, you, he's made you with a sound mind, the mind of Christ. He's giving you all things. He didn't give you to put that junk in your body, you know, to alter your mind. And people say, well, I use it for medicinal. What's that word? Medicinal. <laughs> see, I, I can't, that's why I was, see, that's what drugs do to it. It does to you. You can't even, can't even talk. I was terrible in English and geometry, amen. But I was great in social studies and people, amen. Hallelujah. But, you know, we, we try to make every excuse in the book over justifying something, you know. But the whole time I was doing all those things, I was miserable inside. You know, I go see all these concerts, go see Aerosmith, go see Sticks, you know, go see Bad Company, go see all these groups, the Eagles, all of them, Led Zeppelin, all these different groups. And then I'd get home at night and I'd look at all these posters I had on my wall because I love music, you know, and I seen Kiss, you know, love Kiss, you know, I loved them. And you're looking at these people and you're going, man, there's got to be more to life than this. This is my idols. I mean, and I was miserable, and the Spirit of God just was talking to me the whole time, going, Mike, what are you doing? And I'm like, I don't know. You know, I'm caught up in a in a in a in a, in a, a vacuum here, and I don't know how to get out of it. Lord, there's got to be, there's got to be more. There's got to be, there's got to be something more out there. How do I get to it, Lord? And I was I was every night, I got high every night. I would struggle going to bed with the Holy Spirit. Every day I'd get high. Every night I would struggle with getting with the Holy Spirit talking to me and just I, anytime somebody talked about God I always listened I always listened there's got to be more Lord what am I missing there's got to be more and there was there was thankfully there was a friend I was working at Howard Johnson's as a desk clerk in 12th grade and uh, a friend of mine came and he was on fire for God on fire for God. We're the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. We're overcomers. We're more than conquerors, man. We're seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. I'm like, what in the world? Where's this guy coming from? Man, I like this guy. You know, I said, where are you getting all that stuff? He says, it's right there in the Bible. You don't read your Bible? I'm like, well, no. <laughs> you, know, uh, you know, I said, I've never been to, I've been around people that are that excited for the Lord. He said, come be at church with me. So I did. I went to church with them. Walked in, people was praising God, worshiping God. I've never been in a church like that before in my life. And it changed me. You know, I got filled with the Holy Spirit. You know, I was a tongue talker. I know we don't talk about it much around here. And, and I, I'm like, Paul, I'll speak in tongues more than all of you. But when I'm around you, I'll speak in English where you can understand. Amen. But I'm telling you what, the baptism of the Holy Spirit changed my life because it was the power from on high to be a witness for Christ. That's what I was missing. I was missing some power in my life. Not that I wasn't saved. I just need a little bit more. Anyway, long story short, I started going to church. I, when I got filled with the Holy Spirit, when I, my life changed on a dime. I went a complete 180. My mom thought I then got involved in the cult because I went from doing drugs every day, every day, every day, to witnessing for Jesus, praying. Reading the Word of God nonstop, 24-7. Honest to God, we did that for a year. That is, no, that is no lie. I was on so on fire for the Lord, so hungry for the Word of God, that it changed my whole life. 
And I, I was so on fire for God, I didn't even go back to graduate school. I'd already passed all my credits and had my caps and gowns and everything else. And I Mike, where'd you go? Most people drop out of school because, you know, no good. Man, I was so on fire witnessing for the Lord and doing things for God. I was actually dropped out of school. That's crazy. I know that was not wisdom. Thankfully, I had a pastor that had some wisdom, you know, and he reeled me and said, Mike, you got to get your diploma. And I did. But, you know, in the meantime, I was so on fire for God. Man, God was moving. God was moving. I started praying. He said, man, if you could pray five minutes, man, you were super spiritual. Five minutes, man, you were on fire. We would pray for hours, me and this guy. Hours. Read the Word of God from sundown to sun up. Drinking coffee, reading the Word of God. That is no joke. Got so full of the things of God, and man, man was passing out tracks. We'd go to church, and you got any tracks to pass out? Yeah, we think we got some tracks back here that open the closet up. <laughs> You know, dust falling off the tracks, we'll take them, you know. We was passing them out of the university down in Rock Hill, went to the university, you know, just passing out tracks, witnessing the people, not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, seeing God move in people's lives. I seen my dad get saved. He got saved, he shut down the beer joint, started going to Bible college, and then he died. You know, that's about how quick it happened. First song I ever wrote, y'all heard it, Daddy's songs. First song I ever wrote was about my dad. You know, because I was all I just started getting a connection with him because I was so on fire for God. You know, he didn't know how to handle that love. You know, because when you, you know, man, I love to love people. You know, and that's, uh, you know, I don't know if it's like raised by my mama, but I just called me a mama's boy like Mr. T. Mr. T said, we need more mama's boys out there. And it's true, man. We need some people to send touch with their feelings. So many people are macho these days, man. They can't, they can't reach out and, and be honest with their emotions of what's really important. I'm not talking about being a pansy. I'm not talking about being a candy. Amen? I'm talking about being macho, but being able to say, I love you at the same time. Amen. I love you, sucker. Amen. <laughs> Let me get my tattoos out. You know, amen? It's like, uh, you know, that's the most important thing that we can do to people is love them. My dad, man, when that love hit him in the face from his son, he didn't know how to handle it. But it broke him down, and he got saved. And, he, you know, before he died, I'm so thankful for that, that he got saved. But, you know, I didn't have anybody to rely on after I got on fire for the Lord. You know, my mom, my dad passed away three years later. My mom died. You know, my niece was killed in a car wreck. My best friend drowned. You know, man, I was just surrounded by death, you know. And I didn't have anybody, nobody around except the Holy Spirit and the Lord and the church. Thank God for the church. The church I was at, Larry Souls and Kathy Souls, they... They took me under their wings. They trained me, and uh, you know they licensed me in the ministry when I was 21. And it was it was the most uh, incredible thing what we did there in Rock Hill and building the church down there. Uh, and it's amazing what, what what they have done down there now. Uh, but you know it, it changed my life, and that's what Christ will do. He will take you out of a circumstance of nothing, a circumstance of brokenness, and He will raise you up. And that's what we need in these last days. We need people that. Can, can have a testimony that they're actually walking in the power of God and they're living their life out there publicly for Christ.